we might all be overusing the unemployment rate. Spoiler alert, that's okay. In this video series, we'll be providing actual in-depth information on subjects affecting the Texas economy. We've all heard of the unemployment rate. It's always in the news. This agency loves to bring it up. And there's that one family member. Yes, Uncle Bob, we know. And during times of economic uncertainty, we tend to watch it very closely. But is it always the best indicator of what's happening in the workforce? That's a bit more complicated. A little backstory. The federal government started measuring unemployment during the Great Depression, when it needed real accurate data on how many people were experiencing joblessness. Yet it took time and a few tries for officials to decide on the best way to collect data that revealed the true situation. In fact, the government didn't release its first monthly report of unemployment until 1940, 10 years after the stock market first crashed. The report has changed significantly since then. About the only aspect that hasn't changed is that experts are still debating if it tells us everything we need to know. That's because the unemployment rate is based on a few concepts. Someone with a job is employed. Someone who doesn't have a job but is looking for one and is available for work is unemployed. These two groups of people, the employed and unemployed, make up the labor force. And if you aren't either, then you aren't part of the labor force. Sounds simple. Well, life is never that simple. It doesn't tell us whether someone recently lost their job or is making less than they need to, for example. The issue got even more complicated during the pandemic, when people and businesses started behaving very differently, and in more ways than making sweatpants a must-have fashion statement. Many parents had to choose between working and taking care of their kids. Business closures meant fewer options for those seeking work. Both of those situations could mean less people being counted as part of the labor force. These unknowns get economists to thinking about how to paint a more complete picture, even during times of economic growth. So what do they turn to? More data. Where they start may surprise you. It's with five additional unemployment rates. What we all think of as the unemployment rate also goes by the name U3. It's one of six unemployment rates labeled U1 through U6 that the government releases. The things they tell us can be drastically different. For instance, in 2016, we reported Texas's annual average for unemployment ranged from a U1 rate of 1.6 to a U6 rate of 8.4%, depending on who was being counted. These additional metrics may reveal a lot more, but economists love data. They often look beyond the unemployment rates to pay more attention to the number of people employed or the size of the labor force. These data sets can help fill in some of the blanks and make sense of an unusual economy. There's still more. During the early days of the pandemic, all those metrics lagged a little too far behind what was happening in real time. Analysts turned to another Great Depression era program, unemployment insurance. Tracking initial claims provided data critical for gauging the health of the economy. Just weeks into the recession, Congress signed the CARES Act into law before initial claims peaked in Texas. None of this data is perfect, and it's not meant to completely replace U3. Experts are still debating if any of it is genuinely reflecting real life. And that's a good thing, because ideally, everyone should be seen and counted. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get through that one without laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> People will come when they hear the drums at a minute or two to two today, a minute or two to two. And why that is the only one I remember.